the precision of our manufacturing tools needs to improve to make quantum computing possible. We're moving forward uh, things for quantum communications and especially quantum computing. I think the main thing is technological, and I think mainly it's developing better, preci better precision tools. And I think we'd be wise to really go directly for atomic precision tools. I think there's some significant um, advantages there. A scanning tunneling microscope is nothing more than a, a moderately sh sharp tip that is brought down very close to some essentially atomically flat surface, something that's at least very flat. And with a small bias, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's interesting because it's a quantum device in and of itself. The way a, a scanning tunneling microscope works is, is we have some surface that we're interested in exploring. We bring a tip down until it's a tunneling distance. In other words, the range of uncertainty in the position of that electron is comparable to the gap between the tip and the surface. And so we put a small bias, a few volts, between the sample and the surface, and, and it has to be a moderately conducting surface that has some free electrons. And so the electrons can just jump magically from either the tip to the sample to the sample to the tip. And it's exponentially dependent on that distance that the tip is away from the surface. And so we set up a certain bias, and then we have a little uh, actuators that move the tip up and down, and we ask it to set up a particular set point current. Might be one nanoamp, let's say. And so the uh, little control loop moves the tip up and down until it achieves that one nanoamp. And then we also use actuators to move the thing laterally. And as the current increases and decreases because of atomic corrugations on the surface, the tip moves up and down, maintaining that one nanoamp current. Uh, and then if the tip's sharp enough, then you can actually see the atomic structure on the surface. Virtually all of our fabrication technology that works at, at the nanoscale is analog fabrication technology. It does not take advantage of the fact that matter is made up of quantized matter atoms and molecules. I think there's a hugely exciting opportunity for another digital revolution where we go digital with the fabrication. And so I've defined what I call digital atomic scale fabrication, where the binary functions are the making and breaking of chemical bonds, where we have to have a digital address grid, a spatial address grid, where we can control where we make or break those chemical bonds. And very important, there has to be error detection and correction. All of our information technology only works because th th there's no such thing as a perfect process that's not going to make errors. Uh, so you've got to have error detection uh, and correction technology. So right now, as far as I'm concerned, there are two technologies that satisfy my criteria for digital atomic scale fabrication. One of them is our STM uh, lithography, which I'm not going to bother going over all the details, but they meet all those criteria. The other technology that meets all those criteria is called biology. I do think there's a great opportunity for the government to invest in sensitive infrastructure, in particular the power grid. There was a great, at the Q, one of the QEDC meetings, a great case was made for making sure that the information, the, the power grid has to communicate. And so if somebody can hack into that power grid, uh, they can create massive disruption in our power grid uh, if, if they're bad actors wanting to do so. So there'd be a great opportunity to do quantum communication to protect our power grid and other sensitive uh, networks. So I think that's a great opportunity for the government to come in and spend the money and, and help develop that. And I do believe that there's such a strong need for security and marketability of security. Once Goldman Sachs or Bank of America or some major financial institution can claim, we have quantum encryption protecting your personal financial information, everybody else will follow. Especially in quantum computing and in quantum technology in general, we're in the very early stages. And we're in a uh, largely, uh, especially for quantum computing, pre-competitive stage. The more that we can collaborate, the better. 
And so uh, uh, I really, really, uh, the, my very first meeting, I was uh, uh, really impressed with uh, Joe Braz, uh, uh and and I was excited when uh, my uh, friend Celia Mersbacher was uh, uh, made deputy director. We're extremely happy uh, uh, to be a part of this. We think they're going to be uh, an extremely important ally to U.S. companies, and, and they realize that some international cooperation is is going to be useful. But this this is an international technological race, and this is not a party we want to be late to. And so I think with their leadership and and the the, the wonderful engagement you've seen from virtually everybody, uh, Lockheed Martin, IBM, AT and T, Google, uh, uh, GE. Uh, uh, Raytheon, uh, Boeing, uh, it just it's a who's who of, of American technology leadership. And so I, I feel very strongly that they're going to really help out with uh, developing quantum technologies.